Hello, everyone. We're going to get started with our webinar in about two more minutes. Well, welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for this webinar, which is presented by Global Pet Expo and Pet Store Pro. We're very pleased to be able to bring you these free webinars as part of our ongoing commitment to pet retailer education. Before we get started, I will have a few housekeeping announcements to share with you. This webinar is being recorded, so if you miss anything or you want to share it with your colleagues, you will be able to find it on the Global Pet Expo website. You'll also get an email with a link to the webinar recording at the end. If you have questions, you can post them in the question box that you should see on your screen. We'll leave a little time at the end to answer all questions and we'll do that at that time. So today I'm excited to introduce today's presenter, Liel Michelle. In 2006, Liel founded Bow Wow Dog Bow Wow Beauty Shop, which was an award-winning retro dog bakery and pet boutique located in San Diego. It's now called, known as Bow Wow Dog Bakery. Um, prior to opening, she enjoyed a successful career in women's fashion, corporate retail management, and corporate amusement park management. She was inspired by her pet, her Chihuahua Frida, her standard poodle Mumsy, and her Bichon named Sugar to create brands that utilize her skills, creativity, and passion to build memorable businesses catering to dogs. Liel is a popular speaker at several shows, including Global Pet Expo, and she also contributes to published print and online content to add or improve pet store design, retail merchandising, client experience, and grooming salons. In 2008, her store was awarded first place in Pets Plus Magazine's Coolest Stores competition. She loves sharing her passion for pets and the pet industry, and she looks forward to sharing that passion with you today. So I'm going to quickly switch over to Liel's PowerPoint for you. And you should be seeing that now, and I'm going to turn things over to Liel. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you so much, Marcy, for that amazing intro. <laughs> so I'm very excited today to uh, bring with you all of my years of uh, experience and knowledge uh, within corporate retail and specifically uh, pet retailing and boutique retailing uh, specifically. And one of the uh, the title of this particular webinar is how to create uh, uh, how to create a store experience to improve your sales and garner clientele. And one of the ways that I've been able to sustain a, you know a boutique uh, in the pet industry is uh, the ability to uh, design, retail, and merchandise my store in order to garner that loyal clientele to keep them coming back year after year. Uh, much like your favorite restaurants, uh, clothing store, gift shop, a lot of people will, if you have the choice between a store that has a great product selection, customer service, and 
bad design or one with great customer service product selection and good design, most likely you're going to go to the one that has great design and gives you, um, has great ambiance and gives you a feeling when you walk in and experience that store. So that's what we're going to be talking about today because I realize that there are lots of small stores, boutiques, and even grooming salons that want to start or uh, add to their retailing and improve upon their retailing. And one of the key factors in doing that, especially nowadays with the younger generations, that experience is really what is going to garner your loyal clientele. So before we get started, I will tell you just a little bit about me. We'll run through really quickly. Um, once I'm able to forward that arrow, there we go. So one of the things that brings us all together, that gives us common ground in this industry, is uh, this amazing quote by John Grogan, who was the author of Marley and Me. It's amazing how much love and laughter they bring into our lives and how much closer we become with each other because of them. And there's no industry where this is more true. I mean, we're all here for the same reason. Uh, we love, you know, uh, we're actually, we're absolutely obsessed with our pets uh, and our dogs. And that is the common bond that we share. And um, let's face it, retailing, you know, if you're a professional retailer, it's kind of like professional shopping and designing. And, uh, and we get to do it all with our best friends, our best furry friends. So that kind of gives us all common ground uh, to start from. And that's why we're all here. Uh, so in 2006, after a, uh, a couple different careers in corporate uh, retail management in Beverly Hills and New York City, I uh, then went on to uh, be a district manager and a manager in amusement park uh, retailing. And then I took a summer off and I, you know, really thought long and hard of, you know, what have I always absolutely loved and been really passionate about in my life? And, you know, it always came to animals and pets and dogs. So luckily for me to block down the street from my home was a grooming salon that was for sale. And so I really started to do my due diligence and, uh, you know, look into this industry and research this industry, and I was all in. <laughs> so uh, in 2006, I opened my own grooming salon and pet boutique with a little 50s flair, and no, that is not me in that picture. I don't have tattoos. <laughs> uh, not yet, anyway. Um, but that is my little Frida on the right-hand side. She was uh, eight pounds of uh, inspiration that got me into this industry, so I am forever uh, grateful to her. Rest in peace, my little Frida. And then um, going on, there's my little Frida again. Uh, you know, she inspired quite a few different things, uh, products, uh, one of the, which was this tutu line that I did for a hot minute, which I don't do anymore. Um, but there were, you know, all of us can really relate to, you know, our pets getting us into the industry. And a lot of times just that, um, you know, that story of, about your love for your pet, um, of why you got into this business, really goes a long way with your clientele. Um, I, I really, really uh, advise you to make sure that your clients know the story behind the brand, uh, because they're not relating to the brand, they're relating to the store owner first. And um, so they want to know, why did you do this? Why did you get into this business? And, you know, having a little pro uh, I'm sorry, profile on your business website starts that experience before they ever get to your store. So make sure that you have something about your pets and your, um, your story about the inspiration for your store because it is extremely relatable and it starts that store experience before they ever walk through your door. Uh, for example, in my store, um, you know, they'll come in asking for my pets specifically, and they're almost always at the store with me, and I know a lot of you can relate to that, um, taking your dogs to work with you every day. I mean, honestly, that is one of the perks being in this industry. You know, how many other industries uh, are you in that you can take your dogs to work with you every single day? There's not a lot. So I do highly recommend 
first and foremost, to make sure that that story is known uh, of your brand, because once again, we're all humans, we're relating to the human behind the brand, and that is really important um, to have that information on your website. I see a lot of websites that have no story, um, there's there's nothing personable, um, and it, it just makes it a little bit more difficult for the the consumer to connect to your brand. Um, so again, we're creating that store experience before the client ever reaches your store. Um, then <laughs> uh, a couple of years later, 2006, I opened a small dog daycare within my business. Uh, and uh, I was looking for, you know, really fancy upscale uh, hotel suites that I could have um, for my small dog clientele in my store um, without having bars on it because uh, we are an upscale business and if people don't want to see their dogs uh, behind bars when you're in that kind of an environment. So I uh, uh, started to create and produce uh, kennels as well and I do those occasionally when uh, money is shoved in my face, otherwise I don't have that much time. Uh, <laughs> but they are really nice and customizable. Um, then in 2015, to really uniform, um, my store, I decided that I wanted to create a line of uh, pet grooming apparel because, uh, you know, I'd been through so much uh, with my grooming staff uh, and myself for so many years uh, with, you know, broken buttons and tattered zippers and, you know, just really thin material that would rip constantly. So I decided to start, um, you know, it, it was just an effort to start to uniform my own staff. Uh, and then some of my groomer friends, uh, you know, caught wind of these designs. And so in 2015, we took it to market to uh, Pasadena, uh, uh, our first trade show in Pasadena at one of the Barclays shows. And here we have the very talented uh, creative groomer, Lori Craig, uh, in our military smock on the cover of Groomer to Groomer magazine. That was really exciting. Then we've got USA Groom Team Kelly Knight here over on the left-hand side that's modeling one of our designs, as well as Angela Comfy over here um, on the right, another queen of creative for those of you that are just pet uh, uh, retail-centric. Um, these are some really big stars in the grooming industry. And then we have um, Victor Rosado, kind of famous, and also uh, Jonathan over here on the right-hand side modeling our grooming apparel as well. That brings us to 2018, and I'm trying to get through this real quick so we can get through, uh, get to all the info I've got for you guys. In 2018, I had this amazing, charming, uh, very talented uh, groomer, uh, Gabriel Feitosa, uh, working for me from Brazil. And uh, our building, as a lot of you may have experienced, um, was uh, going up for sale and or they're prepping the building for sale. So I wanted to expand into a bakery as I had been um, supplying or been sell known for selling really nice cakes and cupcakes and so forth, designed by another company for my store. Um, but I needed a bigger space. Uh, so our building uh, wasn't wanting to give us the terms that we needed, so we found a space and moved. And at that time, uh, I sold my grooming salon to Gabriel Feitosa. So now we are both in the same space and run our businesses separately, uh, but it has been a very, very good uh, joint effort, you know, uh, which enables us to kind of help each other out for marketing and all kinds of things that's worked really, really well. So we've got this very famous international groomer, Gabriel Feitosa, in our salon that, uh, you know, and I'm still able to be there and see the faces of all my clients that I've built uh, for over 12 years. And um, so that's really nice. Now they get to see me in a new uh, uh, role. And uh, we also had our 12th birthday um, in 2018, and that's when I got my little sugar over there on the right-hand side. Uh, Gabriel Feitosa um, knew of a breeder that was retiring, this sweet little girl, um, from being a champion uh, Bashan. And so I said, yes, I'll take her. She's adorable. And we've been together ever since. And she, we're obsessed with each other. She's adorable. 
So this brings us to my um, uh, bakery that I started. Uh, you know, I, I years ago I said one day I think I might want to do a dog bakery because I have some ideas, some fresh ideas, and I, I think I could do this. And here we are in 2018. And some some of my merchandising shops, which we will uh, delve into a little bit later in the webinar. And then I met my sugar. Here's a fun little video for you guys. Or this is my mumsy. I'm sorry, mumsy. So <laughs> that leads us to. Uh, 2018 when we won uh, America's Coolest Stores um, by Pet Plus Magazine and Mumsy and I ended up on the cover of their magazine which was such a great honor and um, I don't love this picture of myself but Mumsy looks amazing um, you know for those of you that are on uh, going to be on the front cover of a magazine you know invest in the time that it takes to get them to do your hair or makeup so you don't look like this on the cover of a magazine. Uh, not my best shot, but they really chose a shot for Mumsy and she looks absolutely amazing. So I was very honored to receive this um, uh, trophy award and magazine cover. So that's always really nice um, to share, you know, about our brand. Um, and that's also when we, you know, fully went operational with our dog break bakery and everything. So that's been a lot of fun. Um, and then in 2019, we ended up going wholesale for retailers. Um, so now we offer our baked goodies uh, for wholesale. Uh, we're on Pet Plus magazine and obviously you can contact us. And I wanted to tell you the reason why I am here on this webinar and why I'm able to uh, have wonderful companies like Pet Store Pro and Global Pet Expo uh, hire me is because for many years, uh, I was just doing my due diligence with social media, posting all my photos on Pinterest and uh, Instagram and Facebook, uh, you know, to garner clientele right to come and purchase either online or in store and little did I know that um, I actually was also garnering a clientele of retailers that were following uh, my merchandising techniques and uh, sales techniques and different things like that my design techniques for my store um, and so um, and we went from Bow Wow Beauty Shop to Bow Wow Dog Bakery. We're still in transition with our naming, but um, essentially it's the same brand. And uh, this is how I get more than 80% of my website traffic is from Pinterest. That is how powerful Pinterest is. So for those of you that do not have a Pinterest profile, please start uh, now <laughs> with a Pinterest profile. Because although you may not get a ton of walk-in clients or on, you know, for specifically from Pinterest, you get a lot of interest and a lot of website uh, traffic from it, which is obviously good for um, SEO or, or search engine optimization for your website. So that is why I'm here today, because I was just doing my own little thing in my own little world, and a lot of uh, retailers were taking notice. Um, which I found out when I went to trade shows for my uh, retro stylist wear, grooming apparel. So I love this quote, design well and they will come. Similar to what we were speaking about earlier, if somebody has two different businesses to choose from, they both have great customer service, they both have a great product selection, the, the deciding factor is going to be the design of those stores because great design creates an ambiance which then creates a feeling that you want um, your clients to have. If a client walks into your store, you know, they may not remember your store name, they re may not remember your store, you know, your personal name, but they will remember the feeling they get from the ambiance that you create in your store. Um, so that's why design is really important. 
And speaking of really good design, I don't know how many of you know this store, but this was honestly, you know, back in 2006 and before when I was doing my research in the industry, um, I'm in San Diego, so LA is very close and I lived there for many years. Um, this is Fifi and Romeo, and I just think that their design is really gorgeous, really beautiful. Um, I'm not a copycat, so I didn't want to copy anything, but it just really gave uh, inspiration, gave me inspiration into what I might want to do with my store one day. Um, and once again, going back to research and Pinterest, that's why a lot of, you know, I highly recommend, you know, download that app, Pinterest, and any other design apps, because you need to constantly feed that creativity to give yourself some original ideas for content for your store, whether it's a social media post um, or a different way to display merchandise in your store. Those are tools that you can use. Um, or go out like I did uh, when I was uh, designing my store and um, find other stores that inspire you uh, because you can take away some of those ideas. I think the only thing that I took away from the store is I did get some chandeliers. They weren't as spendy and nice as that one is. Um, but I did have some chandeliers in my old store and uh, they worked really well for me for a long time because that type of look in that store really uh, attracts a certain kind of clientele, right? It's a very boutique-y. It's, you know, as you see on the Fifi and Romeo website, they've got all kinds of celebrities that go into that store um, to buy their items. Um, it is a pricier, um, you know, store, but that's, you know, one, one particular kind of genre within the pet industry. And I particularly liked it, so I uh, myself am more of a high-end boutique as well. So with design and store design, you really want to delight all the senses, the eyes, ears, and nose in order to uh, ensure that you're creating a certain kind of ambiance for people to remember. Um, so first, you know, we already discussed how you can use your website for your profile and your story and, you know, the photos of your store. Um, that's the first really uh, intro into your brand is your website uh, profiles and appearance. The second is the, you know, your store signage and the outside of your store, obviously. Um, <laughs> ours looks tragic right now because we're having permit issues and whatnot, but this right here, the Firehouse Pet Shop, is a really good example, and this is at night, so they're very well lit up at night, um, and you drive by this store, you don't have to wonder what's going on in the store, even with all these you know, displays and everything. Um, they make it really well known. They were very smartly able to get some signage on this light pole outside the front of their store with lighting that lights that up. Um, so that outside presence makes a really big difference. You know, I hear a lot of times from stores that they they don't have the money for the big signs or the facade of their building and, uh, you know, a lot of different excuses like that. But honestly, you don't, you can't afford not to utilize this area um, to the best of your ability because this is how people are, you know, you've got thousands of cars driving by your store, luckily, if you're in a good location every day, you use this for advertising. And one thing that, I like to do uh, that the store is doing here is using your lighting at night to advertise for you. So you are literally advertising, your store is advertising for you 24 seven, much like your website. So the outside signage, lighting and facade is really, really important. And that starts, uh, you know, in the physical world, their experience uh, with your store. Um, other examples of lighting that I really like and branding uh, would be in these signs back here at Shaggy Paws. Uh, so they have a very well merchandised, clean, simple lines um, in this particular salon and store. And um, they use these uh, accent lights um, on their branded dogs there in the background on that wall, um, as well as their store name behind the counter to, you know, further their branding, you know, so you don't 
kind of forget those things. So if you're seeing those things repeated over and over on the business card, on the website, in the store, uh, on all the promotions, then it kind of cements that logo, that business, uh, you know, to that client. And really that's what we want to do. Think, you know, the Starbucks cup. It's not an accident that, you know, they've got their branded cup. You know, they're brilliant at uh, marketing because, you know, everybody knows about that, that little, that little, Sugar, it's okay. Sugar, that's sugar. So everybody, everybody knows about um, that. Sugar, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> A sugar squeaking. Uh, so every everybody knows how important that branding is, and that little that little green paper cup. Uh, you know that everybody takes with them. Uh, you know that's all in the intelligence of that design. So you want to be able to have a takeaway as well. Um, and so for starters, that's just making sure that you're uniform and consistent in all of your branding, uh, whether it's business cards or, you know, shopping bags uh, or, you know, uh, in-store branding. Um, so another thing that a lot of people, uh, store owners forget is the lighting within your store. Um, here's a really good example of tap lighting. So we're lighting the register, we're lighting the, um, you know, the merchandise in the background to highlight it. Uh, all of those things are really important um, to make sure that, number one, your store is well lit, you've got beautiful accent lighting. Um, once again, this, all of these go with the ambiance of your store. And lighting is one of those things that um, often smaller retailers tend to forget. But if you go, you know, and I always recommend this, go and do your research, go walk around malls. Uh, if you are not having any issues in corporate stores, you know, with their lighting, that means they, they've done their job. So, you know, a lot of science goes into that. And a lot of those corporate retailers have done all of the homework for us. So it's a really good experience to get out there and you men store owners when when the when the women want to go and you know <laughs> shop in the stores and uh check it out it's really it's it's good to experience it to get ideas um for your own store and see why uh other you know corporate retailers are doing the things that they're doing so um i'm going to give you some other examples of lighting so again something you know for example this is the fendi store um, they've got some beautiful uh, ceiling light. That's something that's extremely memorable and cool uh, that is going to be associated with a certain brand. And then here we go with Fifi and Romeo again. Um, so these chandeliers, you know, this is, it's telling a story uh, of, you know, in your store. It's saying this is an upscale store. It's very elegant. Um, it's going to attract a certain type of clientele. So just remember that, that whatever, uh, you know, type of store design that you are going, think about the kind of client um, that you are wanting to attract before you go on that, uh, that journey. So just remember that. So if you are a you know, uh, a green store that might be important to you, uh, then, you know, obviously you're not going to put chandeliers in a, in a green store, right? You're going to be, have more earth tones, um, craft paper packaging, a lot of things like that, where, um, this upscale look is a totally different vibe, right? So we've got industrial, there's a lot of different styles out there. So after lighting, um, one thing that I really like to um, talk about is um, having experiences. One experience in a pet store or a grooming salon is having a treat bar. And why? So let's say in a grooming salon or a store slash grooming salon, uh, almost every client wants to reward their dog for doing well at the groomers. I don't know why, honestly, I think groomers need the reward, but nonetheless, they want to reward their dog for going to the groomers. So, you know, if you don't have any treats in your store, 
that are easily accessible, um, then they're just going to go to, you know, the the nearby store down the street or corporate store or whatnot. Um, and, you know, you want to be able to keep that client in your store. So you can sell treats by the bags. You can sell treats um, in a treat bar. The reason why I really love a treat bar is because not only does it give that experience, but your clients get to try a variety of treats before spending the five, six, nine, twelve dollars on an entire bag that their dog's not going to like. Uh, so that gives that opportunity. Not only that, it's the experience of, you know, getting to take a bag and select the treats and have that experience with their dog. A lot of times they'll feed their dog a treat. It's just an experience that you can have, that the client can have in your store. Um, and I'll tell you how I came to know this. This, I know it's so pathetic now, was my original treat bar uh, back in 2009. So it just started with a few jars. I think I initially started with like three or four jars and I put this in front of my reception counter and it was very simple back then, but hey, I was just starting out and experimenting. So for those of you that want to just try it, you know, here we go, penny candy jars. I printed my own labels, um, put them in jars in, you know, on the, uh, put them in jars on top of the uh, reception or near the reception and that is key you want it near your reception too uh, because while you are transacting uh, you you know there are some empty moments this gives them an opportunity to fill that kind of space with those empty moments so then in 2013 <laughs> i invested in a uh, a three-layer table and added a lot more treats um, and I don't recommend putting treats this low to the ground on that last step. I learned my lesson uh, on that last shelf that's close to the ground because you get lots of wet noses and you are cleaning those jars every single day, at least three times a day. So if you want to avoid my mistake, do not do that. You want to keep your treats at least, um, I want to say three feet off the ground or so. Um, so maybe that mid-level or higher. And then this is Treat Bar 2018. Um, so for those of you that have not followed us in our online Facebook group, Pet Boutiques, um, I have uh, been known as the Duchess of Hutches. So because I have a vintage store, um, the type of merchandisers that are out there that kind of fit my store aesthetic, um, they don't really match my store. So I have to get creative and I found pieces of furniture such as buffets or on the left in the middle here is a little girl's dresser um, and repainted it to match my store colors and things. On the right here, that was a uh, very nice cherry wood <laughs> uh, display and I, uh, or buffet rather, and I, or, or I'm sorry, it was a china cabinet. Yes, that was a china cabinet. And I took out the glass. Um, and I uh, store all of my treats underneath, so all of my back stock. Um, so that's my preference when I go and buy these pieces of furniture um, to, uh, you know, redo them for my store. Is I want storage on the bottom. They need to be at least three feet in height, and preferably lighting so that you can highlight your uh, merchandise. So that's where my treat jars are. Then um, for an upscale clientele, um, not every store can have, uh, you know, can sell a birthday collection, but every store can sell a treat bar like this. Um, but for those of you that do have that upscale clientele and you don't have a lot of competition nearby, I do highly recommend selling birthday, uh, a birthday selection wherever you get your treats from, cakes, cupcakes, and whatnot. It really brings a whole different clientele to your store. And I have to say that when you have beautiful, Insta-worthy um, treats like this, they your clients will post on your behalf on all your social media profiles. It is amazing. So, um, you know, you want to make sure that you're targeting, you know, Instagram and Facebook. Those are two different groups. Um, and clients will do that. I get tagged all day long, uh, almost seven days a week from clients after they um, have purchased our treats and had a you know beautiful birthday celebration um, and they're sharing on their profile, which then shares with all theirs and so on and so forth. 
uh, you know, <clears throat> for those of you that know how social media works, getting free advertising from your clientele is uh, really amazing. <laughs> so I highly recommend it. So 2019, here's our bakery, here's my little mumsy and her competition show coat, which she no longer has. So now she could run free and dig and live a yeah, as a lady of leisure. So for those of you that are saying, well, you know, my store is too small, uh, I can't add a treat bar, here is a custom uh, treat bar. It takes up very little space. I think we're at two feet by four feet right here. I just thought this was really cute. Um, a store owner in, in pet boutiques had, uh, you know, the Facebook group had uh, somebody that they knew customize this for their store because they wanted to have a treat bar, but they didn't have a whole lot of space. So here's a really creative way that you can um, have that in your own store. And then here's, you know, something like this, you know, what, wherever you get your treats from, you can start with something simple. Here's three to five different jars. You can buy this, um, you know, selection uh, from Scout and Zoe's or wherever you get your treats. Um, I do recommend, you know, making sure that you do your due do, do diligence with the treats and make sure that, you know, they're natural, as natural as can be, produced in America, all of those things, because food, pet food and where it comes from is a really big deal right now. And I'm not going to go off on that tangent, but many of you know what I'm talking about. So um, here's another example of a customized treat containment. Again, this was a custom uh, cabinet that was built uh, by the store, um, somebody that this particular store hired. Uh, so it's really clean and tidy. Um, it's got, you know, you can see uh, signage, it's got bags or cups, it's got scoops. Um, it tells you a little bit, you know, every single tree is labeled. So it's very clean and they've got storage underneath for when they have to fill in their treats. So um, this is a very successful treat bar from what I hear. And here's another custom treat display over here on the right hand side. Again, it's um, such a small uh, footprint in a retail store. So this is a grooming salon um, with a small retail space, which, um, and from what I remember, uh, they have actually expanded this, so it's even bigger and better, you know, nowadays. But that was the initial concept of their treat bar. And look at how elegant and how much little space that actually takes up in that store. It's really a beautiful display. Um, here's another uh, uh, example right here. It's just a big table with all the jars in a couple different levels set up, and there's a label on each jar. Um, so this is, you know, a very clean and tidy store. There's the bag treats in the bag in the back, and I do highly recommend that. So if you know your clients will become very loyal to very specific treats in your store if you do a treat jar. If you can offer the same treat that you offer in that jar in a bigger package over on another display, they are likely to purchase that because then they already know that their dog loves chicken nibbles or chicken biscuits or whatever the product is. So then they're going to go in for the bigger bag. And there you go. You've turned uh, a less expensive uh, purchase into a more expensive purchase and a client that's going to keep coming back for that. So again, that is how you create and you garner that loyal clientele. So they come in, maybe they just want to get a treat for, you know, Bella for uh, doing a good job of grooming and they pick up four chicken nuggets. Well, that four chicken nuggets later on can turn into a $45 canister of chicken nuggets, uh, you know, um, every month. So that's how you really are able to increase your uh, dollar per purchase spend in your store. Uh, here's another example. Um, and again, just make sure that you have your signage. And within a treat bar, you can also uh, merchandise like items or items that kind of go with that theme. So eating and drinking is kind of the theme, obviously, on this particular treat bar where you've got your dog bowls and your gift sets. Uh, and your tumblers, all of that having to do with eating and drinking. So that's a nicely merchandised uh, boutique way to do it. 
also there is a measuring uh, a scale down there so that is another way that you can sell per pound you've seen a lot of stores that do that successfully and so obviously labeling and pricing becomes very important uh, when you are setting up a treat bar and really basically anything in your store so you want to make sure that you have everything clearly labeled uh, for when you're retailing over here you've got an instruction station you can see over here on the right hand side where they've got a menu they've got bags uh, they've got a scale right here uh, and so it kind of gives you know an instruction for your clients on what to do you know with their treats and so forth and then again, sorry for the photo quality. I think that's blown up a little bit too big, but here's a really good example from you know the treat bar to the package treats, upselling those package treats once they really start to um, fall in love with the treats that you have at your treat bar. And then again, for your upscale clientele, again, not every store or boutique can sell birthday products, but that is the next line that you can add to your store um, if you don't have a bakery or a lot of bakery competition nearby and even if you do if you sell different ones then you know different products then um, you might be able to garner that so why and how to boutique your store so even if you are a retailer that is more uh, of a store less than a boutique you can still have vignettes within your store that creates something special. So, um, you know, something different, something that speaks to your brand is something uh, that clients really want to experience. You know, once again, they're following uh, kind of the story, not just the products that you sell in your store or the brand. Um, so setting up, you know, little vignettes within your store and being unforgettable um, and designing with ambiance in mind, that's what I always do, uh, that will, you know, keep that clientele, you know, it's like, why would they go down the street to, you know, a, a met kind of, you know, retail store when they can have an experience in yours, right? So here's some really beautiful experiences of grooming salons or, uh, you know, dog washes and retail stores that just create uh, an ambiance and experience that you're not going to see everywhere and you, the clients want to return to that. Um, one way to create that ambiance is, you know, you know, instead of just ordering off the rack uh, merchandisers from all the store supply stores, you know, create some custom merchandisers for yourself. Um, in my store, obviously, I have a 50s theme, so I do use these uh, refurbished refrigerators in my store, and people are very tickled by that <laughs> experience. Um, here is a store that had these amazing boxes that they are able to move as they get new merchandise in their store. And this store has changed a ton. And I'm so proud of them because it's, uh, you know, what they've done with this area and with those custom um, cubes uh, on their wall, they're able to move that merchandise all over the place. So as they get new inventory or, you know, change their inventory to clearance, they can move all of these uh, cubes around on that backboard, which is um, really cool uh, because you should be changing your inventory, you know, out often and changing your, uh, you know, your store design because people want to come in and see something new and something different um, ever so often. Um, otherwise, you know, they're not going to come in and buy the same thing over and over. There are a few things like food and poo bags and certain things like that. But in general, you know, you want, you know, the different seasons that we're having or holidays, your merchandise is going to change and so will your display. Here's another couple of examples. So over on the right is just really kind of that, you know, very vintage industrial look um, that's really hot right now. Um, very clean and simple. Over on the left, we've got what looks like, I think, some Ikea shelving, but you can see how well um, that can be used within a store. They've added lighting. Um, 
and they've got their awards up there, uh, you know, so something like that is just very clean. It shows you what you can do for a more minimalist type of look where your merchandise is very much highlighted on this particular merchandiser because the color really pops. Simplicity is the ultimate form of sophistication. And one of my favorite quotes by my favorite artist, Leonardo da Vinci, um, what you want to do with your merchandising, instead of having a store where from floor to ceiling, you've got a ton of merchandise, you want to simplify your merchandise to make that shopping experience much more simple and fruitful for your clientele. So for example, on the left hand side over here, I used a cupcake display that Honestly, I don't eat a lot of cupcakes or cupcakes in my home, so that was going unused. So I thought, let me throw some balls on this and, and see how that goes. And I have never sold so many tennis balls uh, in my life. Um, so, you know, I used to sell them and, you know, put them in buckets or bowls or whatever. But on this display, I am constantly sold out of balls. So that just kind of tells you how you can really simplify your merchandising and simplify your categories and house them all together and merchandise and display them all together so that you can um, make that shopping experience simplified and much easier for your clientele. Here's some other examples. You've seen the birthday display on the left-hand side, um, grouping your uh, boutique collars, and accessories all together in a creative way uh, that will, um, you know, garner some additional looks and purchases, as well as, you know, like over here on the right-hand side in one of our vintage refrigerators, we house all of our Bowser beer, and we do sell quite a bit of that at $7 a pop. So I know a lot of stores think that, you know, the shipping and so forth for those items are really expensive, but what I wanted to tell you about that is that it adds to the experience. So somebody that can come into your store and buy dog beer for their dog, uh, you know, people just love that. They think it's just so ridiculous. And I'm a big fan of the ridiculous if it makes people happy and it makes, you know, the store some money. So, you know, think about those items that you can sell. So over here on the left-hand side, a really good display, another grooming salon here in San Diego. Um, they're just simple. Um, on a, Those are curtain poles, and that's how they're displaying their collars on the left-hand side, because a lot of people ask, oh, how do you display your collars and leashes? That is such a simple and elegant way to um, display those, and you can just keep on adding pole after pole after pole to create a large section because we all know that you need a ton of collars to make all your clients happy. And then in the middle from Barker's Lane in Florida, we've got this really sweet and cute shadow box that's on the wall that you can either display your um, fingernail polish for sale or when your clients come in for your grooming salon and want to pick out a color. I just love that idea. Kind of similar to a human nail shop where, you know, you go in and the first thing they said, go pick out your nail color and here you go. So that kind of fits two, um, two functions right there. And then over here on the right hand side, so this is more of a traditional pet store, but you see that they have used um, you know, the end cap, they've created a vignette on the end cap that really creates that store experience, even within a traditional store, right? So, um, you know, they've just got this half canoe merchandiser, and they did a whole theme around that uh, for Christmas. And, you know, that makes you really want to shop from that. It's like, oh my, oh my goodness, all these things already go together. I can just pick out, you know, a few of these things, and I'm sure they sell a ton from that end cap right there. So here's some other examples. Um, so, you know, in the pet industry, we don't have a lot of items that are specific to merchandising for pet retailers, but what you can do is um, grab things from, you know, human merchandising ideas. And for example, the coffee and donuts for dogs on the left-hand side, we've got, you know, underneath the, um, 
the Starbucks uh, squeaky toys over there is a drink holder, right? So you've got just, you know, we're, we're doing the same concept, we're, we're repeating, and humans recognize that as, oh my gosh, that's really cute display. Yeah, I'm going to buy one of those. Um, to where we've got over on the right hand side over waggingtails.com. So adorable that they've got their own branding on a tennis ball in uh, a machine that you can purchase, you know, those balls. Um, so that's really, you know, some really unique um, ideas to think outside of the pot. And I do love in the center here, we've got some IKEA shelving, I believe it is, that's put on the wall. So simple, but look at how well those toys are displayed. And I bet you they sell a ton um, because my own merchandising that's somewhat similar to that with the toys, I sell a ton like this because they're all out. And you can see there's back stock on the bottom down there in those bins. But if you have your toys in those bins versus on the wall like that, what's more appealing? You see the difference? So they have their back stock below with their merchandising on top, and um, it's really beautiful and functional. So one thing I like to uh, recommend is, you know, do your research and seek inspiration everywhere. Like this, for example, is in a, a regular human clothing boutique with just a branch that's hanging from the ceiling. Uh, you know, there are a lot of things that you can do and you can take away from, you know, stores that you see elsewhere um, that you can borrow. You know, I love this particular store is just really bright and white and simple. And what that does is highlight all the merchandise in this store. Every single piece of merchandise in this particular store really pops because everything else is just a canvas to highlight the merchandise. So that's a, a very fresh approach um, and very kind of contemporary uh, that you can use in your store as well, or for those of you that are thinking about a store design. Another item to create ambiance in your store is offering birthday parties. So if you've got that upscale clientele and you are selling cakes and cupcakes and things like that, you can also add on to your store in-store experience by offering birthday parties in your store. Um, you know, just make sure that you're merchandising and designing and allocating a space specifically for birthday parties. Um, so the true sign of intelligence is not knowledge, but imagination. And this is a quote from Albert Einstein, one of my favorites, and it's on one of my, I think my personal Facebook profile, because I absolutely love this. Because there is, you know, something really ingenious about good design. There's a lot of intelligence that goes behind that. And uh, you know it when you see it, right? That's why we all have our favorite brands and designers. And one thing that really inspired me or one, one grooming salon that really start, inspired me, and I believe they won second place in America's Coolest Store uh, 2019 is um, either second or third place um, is Barker's Lane in Florida. So she has a grooming salon and uh, she does little retail, but just when you are seeing her store outside, this is the look that you get. Uh, the experience that you get before even seeing her, uh, you know, going inside, it's just really well uh, designed. And you really want to go in the store. So we've got these vinyl curtains that are, you get a peek inside the store. It's really inviting you to go inside that store. And this is uh, the amazing gal behind Barker's Lane. And uh, her, na her name is Reese. And so she does, you know, she really sells that brand. It's obviously upscale. You can tell she cares a lot about pets. She puts a lot of time and effort into the design of her store, which is, you know, tells us as a client that she's going to do the same for our pets. So you can see the different pictures that she has in her store. She, so instead of having a separate photo uh, station for her pets, um, you know, I have to say, similar to me, we're kind of doing the same thing. She utilizes her store as the backdrop for um, all of her social media marketing. So she'll get a freshly, dog, freshly groomed dog, put her on this beautiful sofa, and it's probably the best picture that that owner has ever gotten of their dog. Um, so she's, you know, 
she's satisfying her clients with these adorable pictures. She's using it for social media and it's wonderful for branding um, for her business. And I like this. This is part of that experience. When you're leaving her store, this is the doormat outside of, or, you know, when you're leaving her store that says you're like really pretty. So again, this is adding to that store experience. When you're walking outside of the store and this is the last thing you see, it is going to put a smile on your face and create a feeling um, of being inside that store that you are going to want to have again. And that is the point is that we're going to want our clients to have that feeling over and over. So with that, uh, we are at the end and we, uh, you know, I thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to be here um, and talk to you about all of our, uh, about uh, how to design a really good space. And if you guys want to get in touch, here's how to get in touch with me. And I will hand it over now to Marcy. Marcy, are you there? I am. Uh, we did have a couple of questions um, that did come oh. in. I think we have a couple minutes. We could address those real quickly, if that's okay. okay. All Sounds right. The good. first the first question was, um, so the shop we bought is a DIY, DIY dog wash, gives a couple of small biscuits for free. Does that discourage people from purchasing from our treat counter? Yes, it does. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty quick. It does it does discourage the the only way that I honestly would recommend that you are giving away free treats is if um you have a bakery and you are trying to introduce a new product, not just as a giveaway, because there's always going to be the expectation um if you run out of those biscuits and they're used to getting free biscuits and they're not there, um, that's going to disappoint them. Um, and you have to think about what, why are you doing that? You know, there has to be a reason behind that. I mean, unless you are a non for profit and you have no interest in making money, um, <laughs> there should be a reason behind it. So I give away free little biscuits every day, but I, you know, have a dog bakery and I want, I do that in order for them to try a small sampling so that they can purchase our other treats. So if it's for that reason, if you are upselling, then I would recommend it, but otherwise not just to give something away for free. Okay, great. Thank you. The next question is how often do you want how often do you want to change the inventory around in the store? How would this affect the customers that like to do their shopping with customer service? So I would say as far as how often you should change your inventory, it's really um, a seasonal, um, it should be seasonal. Um, and and to be honest, there's certain items, um, think about your own experience uh, in shopping. If you go to the grocery store, you know, the milk, the bread, all the staples tend to be in the same place all the time. It's all of the other seasonal merchandise that changes out. So keep that in mind. And even large corporate stores, when I was a manager for Ann Taylor, um, we would have a lot of merchandisers in storage once the holidays came around, which is the, you know, the most successful quarter for most businesses. Then we brought in a lot more merchandisers that we had in storage to handle the additional seasonal merchandise. So I would say keep your staples, such as your dog food um, and treats and things like that kind of in a similar space so people don't get annoyed from having to uh, go and search where they're, you know, where they are in your store, but change your seasonal merchandise um, to keep your uh, store fresh. Great, and we've got one more question. We've got time for one more, and it is, what's your opinion regarding staff pictures with their pets up in the store, a little blurb about them, their pets, and what they feed them, et cetera. You know, I think something like this would, uh, I, I think it's a cute idea. Um, I guess it depends on how big your store is, but I do prefer something like that maybe online on your website so that um, they get, you know, an introduction to you and your staff before they ever even hit your store because, you know, I think that the store should be, you know, an experience, but it needs 
to, you need to have plenty of space for retail. And so I really feel like there's a better space for that maybe online rather than in your store, but it really depends on each particular uh, store depending on how much space you have. Maybe there's a hallway that's very small that's on the way to the bathroom. Maybe that might be a good place for that where you can't really house merchandise, but I wouldn't take up any valuable uh, square footage for something like that when you can sell a lot of uh, retail vertically. Terrific. Thank you. Those were all great questions. Um, so I just want to um, thank you, Liel, for sharing all that great information with us today. And thanks again to everyone who sat, who participated today. Just as a reminder, this webinar has been recorded, and all attendees will receive a follow-up email that will have the recording link when it's made available later today. If you missed that email, you can also catch the link on the globalpetexpo.org website, and you can also view past webinars on the website as well. Be sure to mark your calendar for the next webinar in our series, which will be on Thursday, November 7th. It's Driving Peak Performance for Your Pet Business this holiday season with Lynn Switnowski of Creative Business Consulting Group. Um, you can register for that through the global website as well. So thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful rest of your day.